The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. You don't have to be defeated by the devil. You can walk as an overcomer and be fruitful in the land. Living in God's fruitfulness. I look at my children, my grandchildren, now great-grandchildren, and that love for them is so deep in my heart. God's is so much more for us. His longing for us to love Him and to serve Him and to follow Him is indescribable. Next. Welcome to Life Today. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to tell you how much we love you and how much we appreciate your support through these trying times that we've all had in this last year. Thank you for loving us, loving what God does through this ministry. I'm Betty and this is James. You know, I, I want to reach out to you and let you know that this uh, pandemic that has hit us all so hard, um, telling Betty and me at our age that we're very vulnerable. I've, I've been a type two diabetic for probably 15 years and we've tried to keep it under control but doctors have told me you're very very vulnerable it could be very dangerous those of you who prayed for us thank you and so those of you father i just pray for anyone right now that suffered loss we do know what that's like to to lose someone so close and we've lost some of our best friends lifetime friends that have gone even because of this disease so God, heal broken hearts and lives as only you can. In Jesus' name, do it. I want all of you to know that you have been such a blessing this year. Do you realize that as many people were not able to leave the house, they've watched television more looking for spiritual assistance. And they've told us that they found more love through what they heard here, through our guests, through what we do together. And they became a part of putting God's arms around suffering people all over the world and found a peace that came from it. And also the prayer line was always such an encouragement to them. We want to be, but I want all of you who support the outreaches. Some of you just began doing it, even during the pandemic. God just moved on your heart to touch people with love. Thank you for it. It's been, it's been miraculous. And I believe that God's love is gonna to continue to flow through his people beyond anything you could ever imagine. Thank all of you for helping us touch people with God's love. And as more viewers come to Life Today, they're discovering Life Today. Not a program called Life Today, but His life today. The life that He came to give us. Life abundant beyond anything you ever imagined. Thank you, not only for experiencing it in your own life, but sharing it and expressing it with others for supporting what we've been called to do. Betty, we have brought in all the leaders of the body of Christ from all the different, you might call them factions or tribes or, or sectarian groups. And, and we brought them in with the love of God to care about them and their future, not in any way to use them. We don't want to use anybody for any of our benefit. We want God to use all of us to make in kingdom impact that when we lose, and this is what we started talking to you about very clearly yesterday, you find life when you lose your life, Christ says, for me. What does that mean? Just to say, okay, I give you my life. Well, yes, I, I lose my life for you, but you need to understand what the for you means. It's for his kingdom purpose. It's that the king of kings who has come and his kingdom is at hand and that kingdom is in you because Jesus says, when I leave, I've sent another to live in you. The Jesus that lived here and showed you what kingdom life looks like, that Jesus is living in you now. And he tells us that we lose our life if we want to find it. Understand this fully, please. God help us all understand it. We lose it in his kingdom purpose. We make the king of kings impact on planet earth, which is his garden. And we're the overseers of that garden. If you will understand that we are here as members of God's family, the perfect father, as members of his body, the church, the body of Christ, connected and submitted to the head, we make that God impact, that kingdom impact 
on God's garden and bring forth fruit. Here's what I want you to understand, please, very, very clearly. Jesus died to give us life now and forever, to give us freedom. Paul said, writing to the Galatians in the fifth chapter, the first verse, it's for freedom Christ set us free. Freedom is big to God. God never wanted his people to live in bondage, to live in defeat, to live dependent upon some source other than God. He wanted them to live in the presence of the perfect father who knows how to deliver the best for the people he loves and not only deliver his best to his family, but deliver his best through his family to a world he wants to redeem. And he loves so much, he gave his son Jesus, his only son, to die for our sins that we could be forgiven and cleansed and born from above into the family of God, a part of literally the body of Christ. Now think about this. You know, God never wanted his children to live in bondage. When Joseph was cast aside by his brothers, and he had a little <laughs> pride problem because he was blessed, but his brothers despised him. They threw him in a pit and they really expected him to be dead. But he was taken captive, taken over into Egypt and Pharaoh's court and ended up because of the blessings of God on him, became the advisor of Pharaoh and when they had a famine coming, which he saw when he interpreted Pharaoh's dream, he said, I know the answers from God. And Pharaoh asked him to tell him what to do. And he became the greatest source of power and influence in the entire country, the entire nation. And because of God's truth and principles put in place, the people's lives were spared. But Betty, a terrible thing happened later. Joseph's own family, which he forgave and they knew it. And they were stunned to see where this boy they threw in the pit had ended up. But the love of God and forgiveness flowed through him like a river. And he did forgive. And there was a beautiful union there with the family. But something terrible happened that you don't even hear people talk about much, even when they're talking about biblical truth. Joseph's own family came and sold themselves to Pharaoh because they wanted somebody to take care of them as they'd been taken care of during the famine. Big mistake. I, I don't understand. Maybe some of you great theologians and scholars can tell me how it was that Joseph even allowed that to happen. How is it that that happened? Explain it to me. I don't know what happened. It's a big mistake for us to ever depend upon a source other than the Father for his divine guidance and his wisdom in the highest places of oversight and authority in the land for our benefit. Because it's only when his principles are in place that you're gonna live in a land of fruitfulness and blessing rather than a land of bondage. You know the story of Israel. You know the deliverance miraculously through Moses. You know how he divided the, the Red Sea. You know how he ultimately divided the Jordan. And he led his people into a land that flowed with milk and honey. Now stay with me. God does not intend people on this planet who know him and love him and put his principles in place to live defeated, downtrodden, deceived, divided, full of hate and murderous thoughts. He does not want his people to live under the influence of the father of lies, the deceiver, the one who divides, the one who destroys, the murderer, the gates of hell effect, the gates of deception, division, destruction. Those gates are not to prevail against the people of God. Now you've got to get this. God did not leave his family here that he sets free in Christ to be trampled ground. Isaiah said very clearly to the tormentors, God does not intend you to torment us and we become a smooth road for you to walk on. God wants us to be overcomers. Jesus made it clear because everybody is waiting for the king to come. 
and in their mind, he's going to come in and just take over. They didn't understand that when the king of kings comes, the first fertile field that he takes over is the fertile field of our life. Our lives are to be the cultivated field of Almighty God, bearing all manner of fruit. And the fruit and the, the, the outcome of that life, even when it's tried by fire, if it's gold, silver, and precious stones, it just becomes more magnificent. If it's junk, it's burned up and destroyed. He wants his family to live in the power of his spirit, in the fullness of his spirit, with total fruitfulness overcoming the deceiver's intent, the divider, the destroyer's intent, and live as an overcomer in his presence. Where do you ever think that when we get right with God and we put him first, that we're supposed to live the rest of our life as trampled ground? Jesus said, you can walk over the enemy like dust under your feet. Betty, you and I have seen, because we spend a lot of time out in the country, we've seen serpents, we've seen scorpions. When we see them, we can destroy them. We can take them out. And that's what God gives his family the ability to do. You can see the intentions of the enemy. He is filled with deception, with dissension, with destruction, and with hatred. God says, I want to free you from all of that. I want you to live as an overcomer. Listen to what he said in Deuteronomy. This is so powerful in the fifth chapter. I mean, God, God wants us to be blessed. If he wanted Israel to enter into the promised land and he said it flows with milk and honey, there's no way for you to understand it. And he even said, I'm going to tear down the walls of the enemies, just like he did in Jericho. I'm going to make you an overcomer. You don't have to be defeated by the devil. You can walk as an overcomer and be fruitful in the land. God said, oh, that they had a heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it may be well with them and their sons forever. Here's what God says about living in the land in the sixth chapter, verses five through nine and verse 23. Listen to it. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. These words which I'm commanding you today shall be on your heart and you shall repeat them diligently to your sons and speak of them when you sit in your house. We try to call the family in the family room here so we can talk about the Father's will and the Father's word. When you lie down and when you get up, you shall also tie them as a sign to your hand and on the frontlets of your forehead. That didn't mean put them on string. Put them in your brain. Put them in your actions. If you will take my word, put it on your doorpost, fill your house with it. He says, you are going to live in a land that flows with milk and honey. You're going to be fruitful beyond anything you can ever imagine. Now, please don't miss this. In the last few years, some positive things happened in our country. Even in the midst of having walked away from the truth, God suddenly began to return us to principles. There may have been some leaders. There may have been a leader who put those principles in as a result of hearing the wisdom of God. Not perfect people ever, but great principles were restored in our country. And because those principles of God, principles that the Word of God teaches about how you do things, for instance, you limit the control of the overreaching, over-controlling federal government that we're being taught to depend upon. This is not God's truth when you tell people you can depend upon some other source other than God and one another to take care of you. You don't depend on another source because when you do, you will be in bondage. Well, we begin to rain, let's say, pull that in. We begin to experience the blessings of God. We begin to once again value all life from birth to death, from the cradle to the end of life. Life is precious. And by the way, the only way we'll ever stop the murder of the innocent and the unborn, the most helpless, is not just by changing laws that were not wise in the first place, but by changing hearts mm -hmm. where everyone understands the potential and preciousness of every single life, even the little life in the womb. Positive things happened as an answer to prayer. Don't miss this. It's not a political power that brings you out into the light. It is literally 
the principles of God's truth being restored. When we return to the principles of his truth, we receive the blessings of that truth. Betty, the truths that are in God's word are confirmed throughout history. When you practice those principles, the people are blessed. When you go against them, the people are hurt, damaged, hindered, devastated. And we've got to understand that a political party is not the hope. Politicians are not the hope. God's people, his body, living in his word, just like he said, that when when my word is in your heart and in your mind, you're going to live in the land. I want it to be well with you. He says it's not an idle word in Deuteronomy when he's talking to his people. This is not an idle word. This is your life. My word and my truth is your life. If we're going to live in fruitfulness with the blessings God wants to pour out, it's going to be because we live in the land carried by the word, not just holding it in our hand, but letting it be written in our heart and displayed. This is kingdom life and impact. Betty, this is what God wants every Christian to do. Totally lose their life for his kingdom purpose. You will affect every power. You will affect every realm. Education, entertainment, and certainly national leadership. And you don't look for another party. You don't look for another organization. You look for the living organism, the body of Christ, to stand up, suited up in Jesus, and begin to return to the rock-solid principles of God's truth. That's what we must pray for. Absolutely. And I think what James is saying, too, is if we could only halfway understand God's love and how deep that is. He says in Ephesians, his love is deeper and wider and longer than we can ever imagine. As parents, I've known that. As as a grandmother, I've known that because I look at my children, my grandchildren, now great-grandchildren, and that love for them is so deep in my heart. God's is so much more for us, his longing for us to love him and to serve him and to follow him is indescribable. Betty, you are beautifully as you do expressing God's kingdom life and his love and to have been married to you 58 years, anniversary week. Thank you, God. It's the fruit of kingdom life. Betty and I have been asking God from the bottom of our heart, let us help somehow inspire you and lead you into the fullness of understanding what it is to lose your life in his kingdom purpose to find it. And it means that everything you want for everybody else is just his will to be done through them. Please please don't think that his will can't be done on earth as it is in heaven the love and relationship that we've been able to have, the way we've walked through the challenges together with God's power, that is his will being done on earth. What we've seen in our three children, one now in heaven looking here, what we've seen in 11 grandchildren, by the summer, 11 great-grandchildren, what we have watched is the positive, powerful impact of kingdom reality, losing life for his kingdom purpose to find it in all of its fullness and fruitfulness. Betty, what our viewers have done, and they've done it this year unbelievably in a time of pressure, is get God's arms around the overlooked. You take joy in giving just a cup of water. I want you to watch. I want you to watch this very closely. God's going to speak to you and you're not only going to see a miracle of kingdom impact, you're going to be a miracle. We've been here in Cambodia now with our team for about a week listening to stories from mothers, just story after story. And there seems to be one common theme, heartbreak. In fact, just this morning, we heard another one of those stories here. I'd like to share that with you right now. I 
bẹ nó ngay mơ mới chư nhà chị bảy chị ăn tàu bẹt mơ ọt lại mơ ấy cái tha mơ ọt chia bằng ngày nào mình sẽ chua mua tầng lọ tầng ấy nó ngóc chèm mua chứ chèm ní thở tất qua lọ qua đôn khói bàn ọt ấy chèm thở thôi mất mất ọt đạt cái đau đạt cái đau nó hay đạt đau côn nhom phùng bên nè nhom thay chăng ở bóng nhom dây trăng bóng còn ai mới còn cao mũi kén ấm biên còn ai mà cao mũi mai mai miên ai mưa còn ai nhom dây tam trăng bóng nhom dung mấy nhom dây tụ bài kê chết kháng nó kê thả đại kê thả cho ngài cầm sạt mồm mấy hông còn là côn ngọc sao nó nghe thay chăng ai nhom tha I'm going to take care of this day. Sai was only doing what every mother loves to do. She was trying to nurture her children. And that very thing that should bring so much joy to her has brought so much heartbreak because she's had to give them dirty water. But here's the good news. You and I have the ability to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to be a miracle in the lives of these people by drilling a well and bringing clean water to take the place of this dirty water that's been bringing so much heartache, we can bring clean water that will bring life to these children and give joy to these mothers. We can be that change. I don't think there are any people on this planet that share God's love more freely than the people who view life today. You really experience life today somehow through life today, watching all the members of the body of Christ and all the different people who maybe been taught to be at odds suddenly come together and seeing how much we love to be a part of their ministries and all of you. But when you see something that touches your heart because it touches the heart of God, you will be a healing factor. And Betty, I know even as we, we looked at that and we saw that, that, that mother with that, that picture, that hit home with us. It really did. It really, I mean, my heart was really touched. That mother who's so hurt over the loss of her precious little one, just holding the picture of them and then touching that picture just to have some way of contact with them. I've been there. I've done that. I still do that at times when I walk past the picture of our daughter, Robin. She's in heaven now. She's happy but I still miss her. And I walk by and I, sometimes I'll pick that picture up and do the same thing that that mother did because my heart was crushed and broken. That mother's heart is crushed and broken, not only hers, but many like her. We can make the difference. We can, we can save the lives of those children of those mothers that are weeping over the loss of their children just because of water, dirty water. Clean water will make the difference. Join with us, and, and there, let's do that. There was a mother there that lost five children, Betty. Uh, I know what Betty's talking about. I'll stop and rub my hand down Robin's picture. We've got her all over the house. Sometimes I'll pick up the frame, like Betty says, and just look at her and say, I love you, honey. And you know, when I was talking to her daughter recently, I shared with some of you, you may have heard this, that she was there with her little baby, and I said, you know, the fact that mom's looking down at heaven, hard to imagine mom's as happy now as she would have been right here with that little baby. And she said, well, well Papa, she's happy. I said, I know, but you know what? God spoke to me just like he's sitting on the sofa with me. He said, your daughter would have been happy with these little children like she is now with me because your daughter spent 40 years bringing my will in heaven to earth. And boy, did she. That's exactly what you do when you say, I'm going to give those mothers a well of water because of the water of life. I'm going to give them and their family water for life because of Jesus. And you reach out and say, James, let's drill even more wells than you're going for. Let's let love overflow. If you could drill a well or more than one, do it. But if you could give $48 and give water to 10 people the rest of their life, please do it. That's where most of the support comes. Or $144, give 30 people water. Whatever you can do, do God's will on earth by giving water for life. Please do it. Go to the phone or go online. Use that bank card like a check. 
we have some beautiful gifts to send you, but you're giving the gift of life. Dirty, disease-filled water. How desperate would a mother need to be to consider giving this contaminated substance to her child? For many mothers and their families living in extreme poverty, this is their only choice. But with your help, they won't have to make this choice ever again. Mission Water for Life provides clean, disease-free water for thousands of children and their families, giving them a life free from the fear of death. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10, $72 will provide for 15, and $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift, we'll send you Speak Your Name, devotions and declarations on the reality of Jesus. Filled with stunning imagery, these 40 encouraging devotions by Lenny Renee serve as a reminder of the power of Jesus' name. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Be Refreshed picture. This beautiful ceramic picture is decorated with Proverbs 1125 and is sure to make a lovely addition to your table or home. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well. And you may request our brand new inspiring bronze sculpture, Divine Servant. Please call, write, or make your gift online. You know, I remember when Max Griner came here and showed me the bronze before he got all the big ones built and then be able to make this small one. He asked me to pray for him. Boy, what a blessing he's been. Wonderful gift. Michelangelo said when they watched him standing by an angel, he said, I saw an angel in the marble, the rock, and I carved until I set him free. This is a great gift, uh, being a divine servant. That's what you're doing. Uh, thank you so much for helping us give water. Thank you for making a kingdom impact. Don't miss tomorrow. Don't miss Thursday and Friday. Don't miss this week. And you know Sheila will bless you, but Betty and I are going to continue talking about making a kingdom impact. You don't want to miss it. If we face pain and suffering, Scripture tells us we'll emerge like steel that's been tempered in a fire. Tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.